Hello and thanks for using TickBoom. In this video I want to look at this question 11 uh, which was posted onto the Board of Studies forum by a student who was describing it as impossible. So it's a vector question, it comes from the topic on vectors in this textbook which is the Cambridge Mathematics Extension 1 textbook for year 12. Uh, these Cambridge textbooks are typically considered on the harder end of the spectrum, at least when you compare them to the other textbooks on offer. Um, but I found it interesting that this student thought that this particular question 11 was impossible. Um, I did a little bit of digging and found there were other people uh, voicing the same concern. Um, uh, quite independently, they were saying that uh, to solve this particular question you had to use techniques beyond the syllabus and therefore technically it was impossible for a three unit student to tackle this. Um, so yeah that piqued my interest. I thought let's take a look and see if there is actually a way to handle this using the techniques um, available to a three unit student. Um, so in terms of what is the question, it says suppose that OABC is a parallelogram, let M be the midpoint of OA and let P be the point of intersection of MC and OB. Prove using vectors that OP is a third OB. Alright, so I might just uh, put this out of the way. And uh, the first thing to do with a question like this will be to draw it up. So I'll just, uh, maybe I'll use my ruler here to get a parallelogram. And we're told that this parallelogram will be O, A, B, C. Uh, we're told M is the midpoint of OA and we're told that the point P is the intersection of this MC and this OB. So this here is point P and we're asked to prove that OP is equal to a third of OB using vectors. And uh, the real challenge is to do this without any fancy techniques, nothing from say university or even the four unit syllabus. So I think um, to start we should define, define a few things, a few things we can know from the information given. So I think um, the first thing we can say is that this vector OM here is equal to a half of the vector OA. And actually maybe what I'll do to make a lot of this easier is let's define vector OA. Let's just define that as A vector. And maybe we'll define this vector OC. We'll call that B vector. And that'll just make a bit of the notation a little easier. Hopefully you can see, given it's a parallelogram, OA being A vector, CB would also be A vector, and AB would also be B vector because they're kind of same magnitude, same direction. Um, but anyway, we know OM, that vector, will be a half of A vector because we're told M is the midpoint of OA. Um, something else we can think about is this vector here, CM, CM vector. The way we can get to CM is we could go to CO and then we could go to OM. And in terms of the vectors we've defined, that would be um, the same magnitude as vector B, just opposite direction. So negative B vector plus OM vector that we've just said is a half of A vector. So maybe I'll just write that as a half A vector minus B vector. So that's our CM. Now I think the next thing we can deduce, and this may be where this question gets 
difficult but not impossible is to notice that CP and CM, they're on the same line. So we can say since CP vector and CM vector are on the same line, the, the CP vector is going to be some multiple, I'll call it lambda, of the CM vector. Because they're effectively the same vector, they just have a different magnitude. So the question is, well, what's the magnitude? I'll just call it lambda. But fundamentally, this relationship is something we can note given we observe they're on the same line. So, okay, um, given we've just found CM, we can substitute that in. So we can say that's a lambda times a half a vector minus b vector which I'll just expand that, so it'll be lambda on 2 a vector minus lambda b vector. Now, similarly, we can make a similar statement about OP and OB, they're also on the same line. So since OP vector and OB vector are on the same line, We can say that OP vector is some multiple, I'll call it mu, of OB vector. Um, okay, so now we need to say, well, what is um, OB vector? Um, OB vector, maybe I'll just write this here, it's mu times OB vector, we can get to OB by going OC, which would be B vector here, plus going from C to B, which as I mentioned before, is the A vector, because that's the same magnitude, same direction. So B vector plus A vector. So if I just expand that, I'll write that as mu A vector plus mu B vector. So I think, Having these ingredients helps get us a little bit closer to where we need to be. Now, um, maybe I'll have to turn over, but another thing we can say about OP vector, another way we could write OP vector, so we've got one form of OP vector here, another form, another way we could get to OP is to go to OC and then to CP. So we could say OP vector is OC vector plus CP vector. So that's going, that's going to be um, OC vector is just B vector as we defined it. And CP vector we found was lambda two, lambda onto A vector minus lambda V vector. So I'll just write that as um, lambda onto a vector plus one minus lambda b vector. And now what you may notice is we've got OP vector in two forms, both of them being something times a vector plus something times b vector, something times a vector plus something times b vector. So we can set those equal. So I could say, What's in front of the A vector here must be the same as what's in front of the A vector here. And um, what's in front of the B vector here must be the same as what's in front of the B vector here. And again, I think this might not be something that jumps out to a lot of three unit students. So it makes it difficult, but not technically impossible. These are still three unit techniques. So what I can say is that mu, mu is equal to lambda on two, and um, it's also the case that mu, which is in front of b vector, is equal to one minus lambda. So given both of these things are mu, we can set those equal. So therefore, lambda on two is equal to one minus lambda. So lambda is equal to two minus two lambda. You can bring this over, we'll get three lambda equals two. Therefore, lambda equals two on three. 
and therefore mu, I could use either of these, but therefore mu is equal to 1 minus lambda, which is 1 minus 2 on 3 or 1 on 3. Now actually that means most of our work is done because if we uh, look back to um, uh, uh, this step here, we see that we had deduced that OP was mu OB, so some fraction of it because they sit on the same line. We've just worked out that fraction. So therefore, since OP vector equals mu OB vector, um, we can say that the magnitude of OP is equal to mu, which we've said is a third, times OB. And that is what we were being asked to show. So using vectors, we've just shown the result. And more importantly, none of these techniques, I would argue, are beyond the extension one syllabus. A three unit student could do this. Now, admittedly, there's a few points where, you know, you need to be um, quite uh, creative, but uh, I still think it's within the realms of, it's within the grasp of a three unit student. So hopefully for all those three unit students out there who may be watching this, hopefully you've been able to follow all that. And um, having now seen this approach, this is something you could emulate yourself. And um, some of these techniques I think are, are very handy to uh, keep in the toolkit because uh, you may find they come in handy for other questions too. Uh, especially this idea of being on the same line uh, can be helpful to define uh, in this kind of way where you go one vector is something times another vector. Um, and then this kind of equating of coefficients I think is another technique that we've used here. You, we also use it in other contexts um, in mathematics as well. Um, so it's those two techniques combined that allowed us to get this result. So yeah, hopefully you found that helpful and uh, tick boom.